Hello everybody! Welcome back to Zen Up Your Life with Sana Sakura. Weather has been very hot here lately. Do you have any cultural things to do in summer? In Japan, we love to tell horror stories in summer, often sitting together with friends in a dark room with just few candles. And then we scare each other with creepy stories. We say that when we are scared, we get goosebumps and we suddenly feel cooler. In summer, there is also a Buddhist religious ceremony called Obon. Obon is a Buddhist event, and we believe that the spirits of family and sisters come back to this world during the Obon period between July and August. And with this ceremony, we are welcoming them back together as a family. Therefore, this is a big family occasion when we gather for this. This is the time for us to commemorate ancestors, death, spirits and ghosts like Halloween maybe Have you ever watched a really really scary movie called Ring? The original one from Japan of course one of the most successful Japanese horror movies When it came out in 1998 it caused a quite a sensation around the world and quickly there were remakes from Korea and Hollywood the most iconic scene is well known. Even if you haven't watched the whole movie, you might have seen it. A bad quality image from an old videotape. A girl with a white dress with super long black hair is crawling out of a water well and coming towards you. We often connect horror stories with water wells. It is not something from the movie, but part of our narrative culture for a long time. As you can see here, this is Ukiyo-e from Yoshitoshi Tsukiyoka. A young lady standing in the dark night. Bottom of her kimono is transparent, which shows she is not physically existing anymore. It means she is dead. But you can see her. She came out of a water well. Today, let's take a look at this lady, Okiku. Okiku was the daughter of an officer in Edo era. She was born by the beachside of Kanagawa. When she turned 16 years old, her father sent her to work at the shogun's court. It was customary back then to send daughters to Edo to serve as a maid of samurai. She could live there, work, and get proper manners as a woman. Okiku went into service without knowing that at this samurai mansion, one of the most scary stories would take place. Bancho Sarayashiki Getting up really early, cleaning the samurai's whole residence, cooking for all people who work there. There was a lot to learn and do, but Okiku was a hard-working girl. Aoyama, her master, was strict as a samurai, and he valued tradition, courtesy, and family heirlooms. As part of her duties, Okiku needed to take care of family treasures with care and dignity all the time. When New Year time came, she was very busy. As these festivities in Japan are a bit like Christmas in Western culture, people go around and give greetings to their families, close friends and relations. As tradition, they have a party for three days, switching guests from one place to another. Many people came to visit the samurai master to give New Year's greeting. The party lasted late into the night, and of course, the master Aoyama treated guests with feasts and great sake drinks. Second day of the new year, Okiku was still tired from the big party, but she had to keep working as more guests were expected again today. She was supposed to bring out an important set of plates. Ten precious plates were in her hands. A bit shakily, she took them out from a box and carried them into the kitchen. Oh, but unintentionally, she dropped the plates and broke one of them. She was so shocked and went to the master's wife. I am very sorry, ma'am, but one of the plates is broken. What? The wife got extremely angry. They are precious plates. They have been hunted down in this family for generations. I am sorry, ma'am. The wife sighed. It was very bad timing. The master Aoyama came by and saw the broken plate. Okiku, what did you do? 
Master, I am sorry. It was not on purpose. This is precious blades, set of ten. You destroyed. He was furious. There is no value for the plates at all anymore. It's not perfect. Do you know what you have done? Show me your hands. He pulled her hands and put them on a table. Look at them. They look perfect and work well because you have ten fingers. Now, this is what you did to my treasure. He all of a sudden took out his sword and chopped off her middle finger. She was tied up with ropes and locked into a small room to reflect on the situation. I know it was my fault, but is a plate worth more than my finger? Am I worth nothing? Will they do more horrible things to me as punishment? I can't take it anymore. I know I made such mistake. I embarrassed my parents. How can I see them ever again? The sixteen-year-old girl was despair. In the middle of the night, she slipped out of her room and threw herself into an old, deep water well behind the mansion. Since this incident, the Aoyama family start to experience strange occurrences. Every night, in the dark, the ghost of Okiku came out from the well, and every night. She is counting. Ichi mai, ni mai, san mai. The ghost of Okiku counted to nine and said, "One plate is missing." Soon after, the wife of the master Oyama gave birth to a child, but the baby did not have a right middle finger. It must be cause of Okiku. The wife shuddered in fear. Everybody in the mansion got scared. They were panicking. Rumors soon spread throughout the town, and the family was avoided by everyone around them. The government of Japan, Tokugawa shogunate, heard about it. Such scandal was an unacceptable, and they seized the territories of Aoyama family. Without their land, the family has no more stable income. Crisis became worse for them. Even then, Okiku appeared every night. Ichi mai, ni mai, san mai. Even though she died, her soul is still wandering this world. She was in sorrow, regretting her mistake. Yet she can't understand why she had to die. She can't go to the other side like this. Usually, after death, the body will go back into the earth, and the soul supposed to go to the other side. But her spirit keeps on wandering in this world even after death. The government asked a high-rank monk to read the sutra for purification of the place. In the middle of the night, monk went to the well, and he heard. Here she comes. He heard Okiku's voice, full of sorrow. Her recital was so powerful that she was even dragging the monk into the curse. The monk started to chant mantra. Wind was howling. The sound of the sagging trees echoed through the mansion. The monk kept his mind strong and kept on trying to appease Okiku's spirit. She was still counting. What if she found out that one plate is still missing? Right before Okiku notices that there is no more plate, the monk was screaming loudly. Ten.
When she heard this, her face suddenly changed. She said, Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. that. She smiled and disappeared into the sky. The monk couldn't find her anymore, and after this, the scary events in the house stopped. Like with many legends, there are numerous variations of Okiku's story, but it's always about the young Okiku who died and comes out from a water well and counts plates. A hundred years ago, differences in status were considered very important, and the importance of human life was treated differently. Poor Okiku was treated badly by samurai family, but her soul was saved at the end, and she could find peace and transfer to the other side. What do you think about the story? Do you think the master's family deserved to suffer this much just because of his cruelty? And what about Okiku? Poor girl was forced to kill herself just because of a silly mistake and social injustice, and then suffer even more as a ghost. Lucky there was a smart monk who found a brilliant solution. Let me know what do you think about Okiku's story in the comment. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more. I am counting on my subscribers every single day. One, two, three. Thank you for watching and don't be scared when you hear voices in the dark tonight. Bye, またね!